You know, building resin kits really is a throwback to kind of a different era. It takes you back to that old school model kit building world. Today we have a build video on a Blade Runner snub. This was done by Goldberg Arms. The kit came out a couple years ago. I'm way late to the party, right? Like everybody else already has their kits out. I haven't even built mine yet. So I figured, Relate, why don't we do something crazy? Everyone's already done the traditional finish version and a silver version. Why don't we try something that's really out there, take a couple risks and see how it turns out. So check out the build video. It took me mm, three days to build this thing. It's only gonna take you guys 10 minutes to watch, to watch it come together. So check it out and then we'll come back here and talk a little bit about the prop and we'll go from there later. All right guys, so there it is. This is the... Uh this is the snub kit in raw form about how it came out of the box. So I spend most of my life sanding. <laughs> You'll see here I kind of uh, I had a seam on the top I had to work with. And sometimes I'll take my sanding blocks and actually curve them like that. And it helps, uh, helps keep you from sanding all over. This is me using a bench grinder inappropriately because I got lazy. And that is the metal part that we... Uh, that we're going to use for the silencer. Just a found, found part. There it is. So uh, on any kit, and this is a really clean, really well done kit, but on any kit, there's going to be a certain amount of filing and kind of prep work that you have to do. Uh, so here you can see me working with the Dremel and a file just to get some of those little seams cleaned up. I'm a freak about resin dust because it is really, really bad to get in your lungs because it's so fine. So you'll typically, uh, I'll typically work with both a respirator and my vacuum just to try to suck up any dust that comes through. And once my filing and sanding is done, that's when I'll jump in and actually wash and scrub those parts down to get mold release uh, off of there. This is me playing with magnets because I'm a child. <laughs> so we're all prepped, we're clean, we're filed, and uh, time to put a thin coat of primer on. You always want to play play that that primer coat pretty thin on uh, on resin kits. Um, you don't want to lose all your detail. One little tip I'll throw out here is that uh, after I've primed a piece, sometimes I will actually take like a paper towel or a super fine piece of sandpaper. And if I have a particular part that I want to be very, very smooth, I will actually kind of polish up that primer while it's still just a tiny bit soft. Um, and that'll make sure you get a really super smooth finish. Okay, so we just used a uni bit to punch a nice little hole in the front of this weird little can that we're going to use as our silencer. So there we go. But I think that we needed a little bit more shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this old weird napkin ring. And uh, we're going to make a nose out of that. And then we're going to use that piece right there, that little oddball. That's going to be an inside inner bit. So imagine that from the side it would look something like that. And then we'll use this ring on the back. Okay guys, making some progress here. I think we finally got the silencer built. So it's almost ready for primer and paint. There's just a simple rod system that fits it into the barrel. More auto primer because I love me some primer. You'll see that little container in front of me. That is actually my uh, little organizer of small greeblies. That thing has saved my butt so many times. I try to use it just to uh, have a home for all my little greeblies as I come across them. And obviously the big stuff doesn't fit in there, but it's great for just keeping track of your smalls on a day-to-day -day basis. Call me a sucker for overpriced spray paint, but this is Rust-Oleum's professional high performance enamel series. This stuff does dry a little bit quicker and I find that it just kind of does a better job leveling and laying down. It is gonna cost you like five or six bucks a can, which is annoying, but 
uh, you know, the last thing you want to do on a paint job like this is get some crappy texture that you, you have to sand off and screw around with. So these few extra bucks uh, tend to be worth it. Obviously the flat finish lays down nice and easy um, and it's pretty forgiving. You can always clear coat it later. So one more little painting tip. If you guys have small parts that you don't want to make custom stands for, uh, I always throw just a, a piece of painter's tape looped over, uh, stuck down on top. That'll keep your parts pinned in place. Yes, you can do this with normal double-sided tape and, and cut a shape. And um, I just find painter's tape easier to work with. You can very quickly, uh, you know, put down a piece, roll it up, and now you've got a tacky surface so those little parts won't fly off when you go to uh, paint them up. Okay, so now we're going to talk about one of those funny little things that people never bring up when it comes to paint jobs. Uh, and this is one of those little discoveries that uh, in the moment you're thinking, how the heck am I going to deal with that? So you'll see on the back here, I kind of kit bashed and built the silencer from scrap materials. Yes, there are a few dents there, but we'll clean those up and make them look like they belong as we move along here. But check this out. On the back, I used an old poker chip to fill in this weird gap hole at the back. I needed the piece I could drill a hole out of and, and have this slide over the barrel of the weapon. Well, uh, here's a funny joke. Even after priming this thing with auto primer, whatever dye is in that poker chip has actually leached through and has turned this disc, and I know it's a little hard to tell here, but it's turned that rear disc pink. <laughs> so now I gotta find a way to deal with this pink disc in the back. I may have to just kind of hand paint a small section of paint in another layer. Maybe I'll seal it with kills or Mod Podge or something. But this is one of those classic situations that you need to be kind of ready for. There's always something quirky and kind of weird that happens when it comes to paint and paint chemistries. There's all types of crazy things that can occur. This dye, this little pink mistake here is a prime example so it happens to the best of us what are you going to do we'll figure something out for that so this tool here is actually uh, a lens wrench which is a super handy tool if you guys do any work with small optic type type pieces it's an important tool to have and then the sight rod i had some uh color frosted um LEDs around rather than the clear ones that came with the kit. They add a little bit of character and since I'm not going to light them up that color will help. So I ended up sealing that rear disc with uh, some Sherwin Pro Block and then just repainted a little bit of, of white over there. This uh, rail for the laser sight is uh, I drilled it out, dropped some screws in there and then it's reinforced with some E6000. And now we've got something that's actually starting to look like a prop. It's coming together. So uh, this is important to talk about. So where that sight rod is gonna glue in, just with some CA glue, it's really important to etch your surface a little bit if you've got paint and everything, uh, to kind of get down to a raw surface and give yourself some texture to work with uh, so that, that glue really has something it can bite into. So I use some CA glue and then roughed it up with an X-Acto and we're all good. So having some spare parts around is always helpful. I actually had a uh, metal weaver knob and binding post around, and that's really cool because I could swap out the resin pieces on this kit for that. The plan is actually to keep that metal exposed as we continue to paint here. So here comes uh, a bunch of airbrushing and kind of uh, getting our getting our low light colors figured out. So again, got to rock the respirator. I'm really just painting with acrylic, but still I don't like to be huffing that stuff. When you're that close to a prop, it gets kind of weird. Um, you'll see my ghetto compressor back there. Uh, guys are always harping on me for that thing. Um, somehow that little hobby compressor, it's tankless, but it is still hanging on for dear life. It will not die. And I'm not gonna replace it with a nicer, uh, uh, tank version until it poops out. It's a good reminder that it's rarely the tools that kind of dictate what you do, right? It's always kind of what you do with them. Some more low lights going in. I 
I like to periodically dry off uh, the paint. You know, airbrush paint tends to dry pretty quick depending on what you're spraying. Um, if you're not, you know, hosing it on there. But I still like to try to hit it with a hairdryer once in a while, what, uh, just as you're working. That way you don't run the risk of kind of smearing anything you've laid down if you're handling that, that piece. More low lights, you know, another, another wash going on here. Um, I believe this is all acrylic. You see I busted out the sanding block there once or twice to kind of strip back uh, some of the paint from a particular edge. Sometimes I'll even use a paper towel kind of like that just to, just to work it in or, or work an area that's still slightly wet. One tip is to try to avoid going with solid black uh, when you're doing low lights. You always want to have a little tint in there because it makes the color feel a lot more real and a lot more right. So now we really, we really got something to come together here. This is acrylic enamel we're painting with now. Just a few red details here and there. Uh, some little red stuff. You'll see we got our wires uh, CA glued into, into position. And we're starting to lay down uh, the first of the little decals here. Okay, here's a little tip uh, for DIY decals. These things always add a lot of uh, dimension to a piece and they add a ton of interest, so always a good thing to play with. This is just a simple laser print and I will typically take that print, seal it uh, with a clear coat and that clear coat is mostly dry but still flexible. Um, I will apply it either with some Mod, Mod Podge or if you want like a grimier look, uh, tacky glue. And the result is something like this. Let me see if I can find it here. This little purge decal. There we go. So just a small detail, but you get a handful of those things going and it can be pretty, pretty cool. So if I have an edge on these decals that's fighting me, sometimes I'll just take an X-Acto, apply a little bit of glue or Mod Podge or whatever I'm using, and you can kind of wipe it into the edge and take it off the rest of the surfaces. Uh, when it comes to metal edging, which if you're doing a weathered piece is always important, of course you can use a silver sharpie. Uh, I still use those once in a while, but Multel Liquid Chrome, uh, their pens are awesome and it's such a beautiful metallic finish that it leaves. Um, the fine tips, this is a fat tip version, but the fine tips are really, really nice for getting in there and doing small stuff. And obviously with their refill containers, you can uh, you can actually spray that stuff for a chrome effect uh, with your airbrush. All right, the blaster is about done and I wanted to whip up a quick stand. So I had a couple pieces of white acrylic that were around. I put a couple cuts in them, dropped some pegs in there. Those pegs are actually made out of fiberglass poles. I think I had around from like, they were driveway markers, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so popped them in there with a little bit of glue and then just a couple screws to hold the bottom on and then we'll put some feet on there uh, and get started with paint. Boom, Rust-Oleum hammered. This stuff creates some pretty cool effects. If you are, uh, if you're in the mood for, for something that is simple and clean but still has a wee bit of detail, uh, that Rust-Oleum hammered kind of bubbles up and creates this textured top surface. It looks a little crazy right now. This is only the first of two coats, but uh, I was really happy with how it came out. Okay, so we have our nameplate done. This is just a simple decal mounted to a piece of wood which has been primed and painted. Uh, 3M double-sided tape to adhere it. The good stuff, I think it's like the, actually it's not 3M. Ooh, this is Doc, this particular brand. Anyway, so nameplate, and I think we're actually gonna mount that puppy right in there. And I actually think I'm just gonna use hot glue um, to get the job done. That way I can pop it off and remove it if I have to later on. I love me some hot glue. I got like a hot glue addiction. Do your homework. There's a few different types and some work much better than others. Oh, here's the moment. The big reveal. Ooh. I think it's coming out. 
All right, there it is. It's done. Goldberg arm snub finished with a bunch of tactical modifications in Arctic white with some pretty heavy weathering on there. I think this thing came out really unique. Uh, I'm very happy with the look. I think it's, it's, it's gonna look awesome on display, but I'm not gonna lie to you. There's a part of me that's a little sad. That's a little sad that this isn't the traditional Blade Runner finish. And you know what? There's an important creative lesson in this. You've got to be willing to try some stuff that's different and just throw some crazy shit at a prop sometimes so that you can learn and grow. If all you ever do is expected, safe, clean work, of course it can come out great, uh, but it's going to be missing that special punch that can really make a piece a home run. So this was definitely a risk going with like the weathered white look, but that's part of learning and trying things and uh, kind of growing and, and building up a particular style. So there it is guys. Uh, some of you will definitely recognize that we channeled some Rick Ross tactical snub uh, details. That, that was a, a kit that came out 10 or 15 years ago and it was similar to how this looks now. The kits are very hard to find and I knew that I wanted to incorporate some of that style into this particular piece. Thanks for watching today. Please subscribe guys if you wanna see more videos like this and we'll be back with more soon, later.